Okay, thank you so much for that, Graham. Um, hello, everyone. Great to see you all here at this open day event today. A warm welcome to all of you. Um, so let me introduce myself first. I'm Dr. Namita Shete, and I'm the course director uh, for the Masters in Management and Corporate Sustainability course um, here at Cranfield University School of Management. Uh, we also have a sponsor here with us today, uh, who is one of our students from last year's cohort. Um, so uh, if you have any questions for him later, you could um, uh, ask then. Uh, so would you like to introduce yourself, uh, uh, Spondin, for us? Hi, thank you, Namita. Hi, everyone. It's uh, great to see you here. And uh, I was a management and corporate sustainability student uh, last year. And uh, so now uh, I have submitted my thesis and we've almost had our results declared. So it'll be great to share my experiences with you all so that you can benefit from it. Thank you, Spondin. So you could, um, so we can have a discussion with Spondin after this. Um, but we also have Alexis uh, from the Career Service uh, Services, uh, who will uh, also be talking to you uh, after my initial presentation. Um, uh, so thank you for joining, Alexis, as well. Um, so, the plan, yeah. Thank you. so the plan for the session is to give you a quick overview uh, of the Masters in Management and Corporate Sustainability course, um, and then we will open up for Q&A afterwards. Um, so if you have any questions, feel, please uh, feel free to sort of unmute yourself and ask. Uh, otherwise, you can also use a chat window to post your questions, uh, and maybe um, some of us, so Graham or Spondin, could uh, let us know in case. Uh, uh, you have any questions for me during uh, my presentation. Okay, so to start with, uh, I believe that this is a very good and important time to study on this course, uh, given the many global challenges, uh, so environmental and social challenges that we face today. Um, and businesses perhaps have a duty and a role to play in addressing these challenges. Um, and they, I think, are also very well placed to do so. Um, so I actually like this picture quite a lot, which helps us create a bit of a background and context um, for our session today and for the course, essentially, uh, which uh, talks about how we have you know, been fighting these multiple waves of COVID and there have been multiple lockdowns for you know, tackling this global pandemic in different parts of the world. Uh, and then we are, uh, of course, also worried about the oncoming recession, which is the second wave here um, that you can see. Uh, but there is no doubt that um, there is this even bigger wave or crisis of climate change uh, that is coming in its wake, uh, where the climate will probably never revert back to a normal state um, at the current rate of emissions that are happening. Um, so it is a very important time for organizations worldwide to start acting upon addressing some of these issues. Um, and also generating opportunities for themselves. Um, so for example, through working on innovation, bringing in new and sustainable products, and basically becoming more resilient and financially sustainable in the process. So this is basically the broad context for this course. Um, I'm sure you've also looked at the web pages for this course uh, to get a little bit, uh, or you know, the uh, information that we have on the website as well to get a broader context, but this is just, um, I thought I would give a, a, a short background around the course before I start, went into deep into the um, things that we actually do on the course. Um, so now I can imagine that one of the questions that you might have uh, had before the session uh, today is why Cranfield School of Management for this course? So at Cranfield, we are a specialist postgraduate university and also a relatively small university, uh, which also perhaps adds to its appeal. Um, as you can see here and on the next slide as well, we rank very highly on various league tables uh, and have an international reputation for producing high performing leaders. Uh, we are also a triple accredited school, which signifies the quality of our course offerings. Um, and also the university is sort of almost like a small town or a city in itself, uh, where we have our own airport, we have our own sewage and uh, water treatment works. We generate our own power uh, since we have our own solar farms, et cetera. So this kind of makes it an interesting place to study sustainability uh, and also to do research on sustainability. Um, and one of the key things that we uh, kind of pride ourselves on um, is the industry connect that we have um, uh, at Cranfield where 
we bring industry into the classroom and sort of encourage our students to build their networks and professional relationships uh, with people in the industry. So these are just some examples of some of our rankings. Um, so the QS World uh, University rankings and the Economist uh, rank our, our courses quite highly, as you can see here. So our Masters in Management and Corporate Sustainability, or MCS course, as we call it, is taught by faculty members with extensive research and industry experience. Um, and there is a solid focus on the practical as well as the theoretical aspects concerning how businesses embed sustainability within their actions and interactions. Um, and there is an emphasis overall on real world challenges. Um, and we sort of work with key, you know, some key industry partners to deliver this course. So in terms of what you learn during this course, um, so this course is a part of the management family of courses and it shares seven core uh, modules with uh, two other courses, uh, the Masters in Management and the Masters in Management and Entrepreneurship courses, which are also conducted, um, in the, you know, which are also a part of the School of Management or come under the School of Management umbrella. Uh, so uh, there are, so you have the seven core uh, management related modules, plus there are five specialist corporate sustainability modules, uh, which you can see on the screen right now. Um, along with the thesis project, which you do at the end of the year, uh, where you do some in-depth research into a topic that you're interested in. Um, so uh, as you can see on the screen, um, these are the specialist sustainability related modules that you will be doing during the course. Uh, so for example, students work on a real life social enterprise challenge during the social entrepreneurship. And uh, they assess a real life industry challenge uh, during the uh, CSO or the Creating Sustainable Organizations module. And Spondon will probably be able to talk a little bit more about some of this um, uh, when he uh, has a discussion with you. Um, so in fact, we are also introducing a new sustainable finance module this year, which uh, we are quite excited about. Okay, so uh, there are many exciting things and sustainability related activities and uh, technology applications happening at the university uh, on an ongoing basis. Um, and you may find more details on this on our website as well. Uh, there is a Unilever challenge, uh, which has been happening for a few years uh, now, um, for example, uh, where the company uh, has been coming to our campus and setting a challenge for our students, <clears throat> after which, um, um, the students actually work in their teams and come up with solutions for the company. Um, there is also the NatWest climate focus challenge that has happened in the last few years where students worked on a real uh, life business challenge. Um, so these are just some examples of the kind of activities that takes uh, that you know take place um, uh, through the year on the course. Uh, so our students are basically, you know, our students basically have uh, many opportunities to uh, network and work with others uh, within the university, uh, from within the business school, as well as with students from the other schools at the university, um, such as the uh, students from the School of uh, Water, Energy uh, and Environment. Um, we also have sustainability speaker series uh, events and talks, which happen um, uh, uh, you know, uh, every uh, few days or um, uh, every few months, uh, where we invite people from the industry and policy worlds um, to speak about sustainability related issues. Uh, and we also try to attend conferences like the ED conference in London, uh, which is again, a great networking opportunity for our students. <laughs> so in fact, one of the key reasons, I think why I love working uh, at Cranfield myself, um, uh, and the thing that we as a university pride ourselves on uh, is the industry connection uh, that we have, uh, where we bring industry into the classroom and also encourage our students um, to build their networks and professional relationships uh, with people. Uh, in industry. So some of our previous guest lecturers have included um, John Elkington, who is a world uh, authority on corporate responsibility and sustainable development. Mary Cray, a former MP in the UK Parliament. Uh, Mike Berry, who was formerly the head of sustainable business at Marks and Spencer, etc. So this is just um, a short list. Uh, there, there can be more names that can be added to this list. Um, and these are just some of the sustainability speaker series 
talks that we've had in the past. So, uh, these are some of the posters for those talks. Um, they have included talks on sustainable fashion, hydrogen powered vehicles, careers in sustainability, um, sustainable transport, etc. Uh, net zero carbon emissions uh, was one of the talks as well. Um, so we have, uh, so in terms of the class profile, uh, we have a very diverse class profile with, um, uh, you know, with students coming from different parts of the world, uh, from different professional backgrounds and belonging to a wide age range as well. Um, and we generally have a relatively small class size as well, uh, which means uh, there is a very good student teacher, uh, teacher ratio. Um, uh, generally, so uh, students can have much better connect and interactions with the faculty members. Um, so, in terms of after your course, uh, our students in the past have gotten, uh, you know, gotten jobs uh, or employment relatively quickly after their graduation, um, and gone on to doing a range of different job roles. Um, and these are just some examples of the companies in which they have gone on to work. Uh, and the kind of job roles they are doing. Um, so I think um, uh, that's it with my presentation. Thank you. Uh, these are some contact details for you. Um, I, you can see my email there as well. Um, I put in Spondon's email there as well. So if you wish to get in touch with Spondon uh, at any point. Uh, so please feel free to contact uh, or connect with us uh, if you have any questions. So I think at this point, I would like to ask um, uh, Alexis to uh, you know, talk about the career services um, at, the, uh, at the School of Management. Uh, and maybe uh, Spondin can talk about his experience um, on the course after that. Over to you, Alexis. Thanks, Namita. Sorry, I'm just going to unshare this. OK. Okay, great. So I'll just share my screen. So hopefully everyone can see that now. Yep. Yeah, we can great. See Thank you. Right, so I'll show you our wheel of activities. So this gives you a broad overview of what the Career Development Service do. Uh, we actually are involved in lots of other things as well, but for the purposes of time today, I'm just going to focus on these things. Now you can see we, we help you with one-to-one -one coaching, workshops, we provide lots of learning materials as well. Um, we have various technologies, which I'll talk about in a little while. Lots of resources for you to research potential companies and employers, and also things like careers fairs and the chance to meet with um, employers and people who are hiring or people who are you know, looking for you people to, to do opportunities at their company. So the thing that makes us stand out, our students tell us, is the personalised support that we offer to students. And what I mean by this is the chance to speak with somebody in a one-to-one -one way in a private room about your career aspirations. And we find that that's really powerful for students. For some people, it may be the first time in their lives that they've had the chance to have this kind of personalised coaching. And it's very bespoke. So when you speak with a career development coach, it's all about you and all about what you want to do with your career. We help you with everything from CV refinement to completing applications for jobs, all the way through to assessment centre preparation and even negotiating job offers as well. So the advice that we offer you is, is very broad, but tailored to what you need. We have a dedicated employer engagement team as well, who are currently three people in the team. Um, we create connections with lots of different organisations now, I know for a fact that sustainability is a hot potato in industry right now. So the logos you see on screen, you can guarantee that really every company will have a sustainability element to their team. So even if there's something on there that you're not quite interested in, I would say keep an open mind because all industries are really interested in this. Student Circus is a specialist company that we partner with and that helps our international students find opportunities to work in the UK. They provide expert immigration advice in a way that we shouldn't and can't. Um, and we partner with them to bring you lots of opportunities from around the world, 
from employers who have actually said that they will sponsor all different types of visas as well. Uh, so they're a great company and they present with us several times a year telling you all the different ways that you can use their platform and their technologies to find your next opportunity. So the career mentoring program is actually something new to Cranfield. Uh, we're really proud of this and it's already beginning to yield some excellent results. So what this is, is bringing together our students with professionals in a mentoring partnership. Uh, many of these are Cranfield alumni, some of them aren't, uh, they're, they're just doing it because they're interested. Um, but this is a great way that you can build your network uh, in the sustainability space and start to reach out to people who have been doing the job for a short amount of time, for a long amount of time, anything in between. And I would highly recommend you get yourself onto that programme once you start at Cranfield to really make the most of our network, uh, because the alumni network has over 60,000 people in it at the moment all over the globe. So it's definitely worth you exploring this further. So in terms of our resources, uh, Cranfield being number one for technology, uh, we do like to use a lot of technology in the career development service. The first thing that you need to get to grips with will be simplicity, which is a very powerful CRM. And what I mean by that is it's your online career management portal. So through here, you can book appointments with our coaches. You can look at vacancies. You can tailor job searches uh, for exactly the type of industry and companies that you're interested in. Um, you can also have a recruiter facing profile. So you can upload your CVs here, cover letters, um, your academics. Um, and so it's a very powerful way for you to connect and do lots of things that the Career Development Service offers. BMOC is our next big tech item on the list. It's a 24 seven CV critiquing system. We introduced this to allow our career development coaches to really spend quality time with you in conversations rather than just talk about bullet points and full stops and spelling. Um, so this would be the first way you can get your CV looking um, in the gold standard that we call it. Um, and it's also benchmarked against students in your industry and your level. And the system is very clever. It suggests improvements. It gives you line by line um, suggestions. And it's just a fantastic way for you to get to grips with that even before you start at Cranfield. So we can give you access to VMOC in the summer, um, even before you land with us on campus so that you can spend that time in the summer getting prepared. So we have many different ways you can research target companies and employers. Some of these are through the library service, um, which you'll uh, learn about if you join Cranfield. And some of these are specific to us in careers. But ultimately, we give you access to paid for services, so you don't have to spend a penny um, researching all of these people so that you can create better cover letters, so that you can start to develop intelligent interview questions, and so that when you approach employers at careers fairs and workshops and networking events, you have something meaningful to say. This is just a small selection of our learning packs. These are developed in-house with our team and all of us are either ex-recruiters or we've worked in human resources. Um, so they're very much tailored to what postgraduate students need to do. Um, and it's just a fantastic resource for you if you prefer reading things rather than listening to things or looking at things. So we have something for everyone, for every learner style. I'll just leave some of these feedbacks for you on the screen to have a look at. We've got one from a parent of a prospective student talking about a webinar that we delivered. We've also got one from uh, an alumni from 2021 talking about our personalized support. And also one from an alumni a little further back from 2020 realizing her ambitions of working in high performance engineering. We do tend to gather lots of testimonials like this throughout the year. Please do sign up to our social media channels, which I'll show you in a moment, so that you can start looking at what other people have said. If you do want to follow us now, I'd highly recommend that. You can get a sense of all of the different things that be available to you as a Cranfield student. Our most active channel is Instagram. 
So hopefully you are grammars too. If not, follow us on LinkedIn and I'll add you myself to our closed group. Or oh, there's Twitter and Facebook as well. So again, we're very active on social media and you can start to figure out what we do now and the things that you might be interested in when you start at Cranfield. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and I will do my best to answer those at the end. Is it from me? Thanks, Alexis. Um, so maybe if you have any questions, do post them on the chat. Um, but um, otherwise, let's uh, hear from Spondon uh, about his experience on the course last year. And then maybe we can come back to questions. If you have any questions that you want to raise, ask, uh, unmute yourself and ask some questions or raise your hand and maybe we could ask you uh, what your question is. So maybe we can um, start with Spondon and his experience. Thank you, Namita. So, uh, my so first of all, uh, you know, welcome, welcome to the webinar, and uh, let me let me be very clear. Every person has their own unique journey, and uh, so I know from experience that all my batchmates had their own uh, unique experiences at Cranfield as well, and overall, it has been you know something which we are going to treasure for uh, you know the next whatever years uh, we we kind of uh, remain in this field. So uh, my session started in uh, October last year. So as we all know, there were a lot of uh, uh, chaos, if I may say that, regarding the whole uh, COVID scenario. And that is when I first realized that, you know, Cranfield University has got really good systems in place. So uh, whether you're an international student or, or somebody from the UK or Europe, uh, it, it allows everyone uh, the ideal background or platform in which to concentrate and focus on your studies and still maintain a work-life balance. So that was that was the one of the first uh, things that struck me. With that background, you know, we we started our study. Some of the modules were online, some of the modules were face to face. So we managed the best we could. And uh, so coming to the modules, so there are, as Namita said, two parts to it. One is we share certain course modules with the management uh, cohort. And then we have got our own uh, MCS modules. So in a way, we get the best of both worlds. That is what I feel. So you learn what basic management is, as well as learning how to uh, balance, achieve a fine balance between sustainability, corporate sustainability, and the management issues that you are going to face. The modules are quite intense. Uh, they require a lot of, uh, some of the modules require a bit of pre-reading. And uh, you'll have your uh, you'll have a brief of what is going to be your final assignment. So you have an eye on that while you're uh, attending the classes. You're uh, connecting with your uh, teammates. You're you're speaking to your faculty members. So you know the direction you want to go in. And uh, in between, there are a lot of other things as well. So, you know, it's it's not just enough to study the books and listen to the lectures. Uh, you have to connect with uh, industry experts. And I completely agree with Namita that we've got a lot of exposure uh, and we've met a lot of, uh, in, we got the opportunity to meet a lot of uh, industry experts who, who uh, were from different parts of the world. So uh, maybe COVID was an advantage in a way because, because it was all online, we got to meet so many new people. And uh, uh, learning from their insights kind of provide a real boost to your knowledge. Because at the end of the day, when we are going to pass out and when we are actually working in the industry, uh, how to solve, how to approach a problem and how to solve a problem. Those are two key things which you can really uh, learn from all of these experts. And they have been there, they have done that, they have achieved a certain amount of success. And it's an opportunity for us to learn from that and maybe take the next step when we, when we go out into the field. Uh, apart from all that, uh, there are a number of uh, competitions and conferences. So uh, the Eddy conference is there and uh, there are others as well, which, you know, the, the faculty and the teams are going to kind of uh, keep you notified about. And uh, then uh, I participated in the Unilever challenge. So uh, it was about new ways of selling ice cream. And we tried to get in a certain uh, 
aspect of sustainability to it. So it was a fun exercise. And uh, we got to meet a lot of students from the management cohort as well as from SWE, which, which was really interesting because as a sustainability consultant or an expert in the field, it's not just enough to talk to fellow sustainability consultants. You have to talk to managers, you have to talk to technical people from different fields. You get in different perspectives and then you kind of come up with a solution which is, uh, you know, which makes sense in terms of uh, social, environmental, as well as the economic aspects. So you have to look at the broader picture and this is an ideal opportunity. And then, you know, along the way, you kind of make friends and because it's, it's, it's not a very large crowd, so you, you get to know people. You actually get to know people. You actually get to know, because of the small cohort size, you actually get to have one-on-one -on -one interactions with, with faculty, which is, which is a great advantage. And uh, in terms of the campus, uh, it's really green and there are a lot of trails and there's an airport. And there are lots of interesting things uh, which which you can do, uh, you know, in, in your free time. And I especially enjoyed, you know, walking on the woodland trail, which is which is on the campus. And, you know, whenever you're feeling a bit of stress, it kind of takes it all away. Uh, there are pretty nice buildings. And, you know, when you're with friends and there's a nice campus, there's there's always things to do. And uh, it's, it's also very uh, well connected. So you go down to Milton Keynes and you can pop down to London for, for the weekend. So that's also there. So it's, it's a good way to kind of balance your, your intense studies along with, you know, getting, getting to know that place. So I had a really uh, enjoyable time at, at Cranfield University. And, uh, you know, the, one of the first uh, jobs that I was able to land was through uh, one of the connects I made during one of my classes. So, you know, you have to look for opportunities uh, and, and then kind of uh, decide which makes sense. And then, you know, there, there are ample opportunities for networking and, and you can build on what, what you want to do. Uh, and then finally, uh, you know, the thesis is, is uh, the, the most important, I would say, the highlight of, of the entire course. This is the chance which you get to showcase what all you have learned throughout the year so even while you are doing your thesis or attending a webinar or you know even talking to friends keep a lookout for the topics you you'd like to specialize in and uh, the faculty and and the staff everyone is really supportive and you can go to them at any time in whatever areas you want to develop your ideas and uh, you know uh, it's 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 just just be proactive just you know, enjoy your time at the university, do your bit of learning, and it's going to be a great experience. Great, thank you for that, Spondin. So I can see that uh, there is one question um, that uh, I can see in the chat. Um, and um, so Irina, uh, you talk about uh, vaccination requirements for international students. Um, so for this, I think uh, we will need to get in touch with the immigration department um, uh, and you know, answer them for you, but uh, let me get back to you on this um, because I I will not be I, uh, the best person to answer this question at this point because I think there's always changes that are happening uh, with the current scenario with COVID. So I do not want to give you some information which is already outdated. Um, with regards to uh, mentors uh, and tutors, uh, so we I think we launched an alumni mentors, um, uh, you know, sort of scheme or you know. Uh, a portal this year where you know you can actually access um, some of the alumni who can sort of mentor you through your journey through the course but then also this is a very small cohort where you have about 15 to 20 students uh, and you end up having quite close professional relationships with your fac faculty members uh, essentially um, and uh, so us as faculty members are quite easily accessible as well. So if you have any queries, um, if you if you need some mentoring or guidance, you are always welcome to just um, pop in. Uh, so we have an open door policy. So it's not like specific timings that we give you uh, to come and talk to us, but you can just drop an email and we can have a chat, uh, either face to face or online or um, you know whatever suits uh, both uh, both of us at that point in time. With regards to your third question, which, which is about diversity and inclusion, um, yes, this is one of the topics which is uh, sort of touched upon um, uh, during the course of the year, uh, definitely. So maybe Fondan might have uh, a little more on that. Um, is 
respondent diversity and inclusion was included yeah so uh, you know it is not uh, like like in life this is not an exact uh, topic which which uh, you know is is focused on in only one area it's a broad topic and what i felt was that this is something which should be there and implemented everywhere so yeah when we were studying the uh, leading corporate sustainability part of it or we were study, studying the social uh, entrepreneurship uh, module or any of the mod any of the management modules so this this is a very important topic which was covered in almost say you know 60 to 70 percent of of all topics you know you won't get this in some in some uh, module like say the accountancy module or or somewhere else but yeah this this is a very important issue and it's it's been covered in in almost uh, all the course almost all the course modules yeah i would say that great so i hope uh, your questions uh, have been answered to some extent Irina. Okay, that's good. Um, so, great. Okay, so there's, I think, one more question there, which is um, from Cynthia. So, could I have the learning modules, course duration, course module, uh, uh, module sent? Uh, okay, so you will find all of this information, uh, Cynthia, on the uh, website as well. So, the Cran Cranfield School of Management, um, um, Management and Corporate Sustainability webpage. Um, but, um, I mean, I could just forward that to you if you like. Um, so there's a question from Ali who, who um, asks, uh, so for the subject accountancy and finance, uh, it is easy for students, is it easy for students who come from non-business backgrounds uh, to excel in this module? Respondent, what do you think? Yeah, so, uh, so I am from a non-business background and, you know, it's, it's not that difficult, but it's not to say that it's, it's very easy. What I would say it's simple. If you kind of, uh, you know, go through the module, uh, course module documents and, and all the presentations, and if you clear your doubts, uh, you know, as, as you are proceeding through the module, the questions at the end of the, the, the exam questions at the end of the module are not too complicated. So, you know, if you've got the basics right, you should be able to pass with a good score. Yeah, so, you know, especially in our module, I have noticed even, uh, you know, non-business background students scoring above 90%. And, you know, there, I know quite a lot of people who've scored even 100%. So uh, it's not too difficult, but at the same time, you have to, you know, be at the top of your game. You have to pay attention. And in case you have any doubts, you have to kind of reach out to your faculty. So if you do that, there's no reason you should not score well. Great. Um, so with regards to so there's one more question, uh, which is about careers um, and what the past students have gone on to do, um, uh, you know, after their course. Um, so I think um, the, the students who actually did their course um, this year, which was 2020-21, some of them have actually gone on to uh, uh, being sustainability consultants. So I think two of them are now sustainability consultants. There's somebody who's into sustainable uh, financial services. Um, uh, so Spondon is actually working with, um, I think there was something ar around GRI that you were doing. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Maybe you so, need to update. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I was, so I started working with uh, a company which was doing GRI uh, certifications. It was, it was a great experience. So GRI, as you know, is a sustainability reporting scheme. So the company I worked with was uh, helping people develop these kind of reports, and uh, with the with the whole topic of uh, companies going net zero, uh, GRI as a tool for overall reporting and then kind of proceeding to the next level of net zero is is kind of really popular in the market right now. So I was doing a bit of technical work as well as uh, business development work. And from there, I kind of moved on to do a bit of uh, ESG ESG reporting, so and and green building certification. So that is that is what I'm I'm working on right now. Great. So the the point here is that you know there's there's a there's many different careers that you can go into. There's no specific kind of jobs, but there's a whole variety of jobs. So people have gone on to um, you know consulting careers. Uh, some of them have actually started their own uh, small businesses. Uh, some of them are working as uh, research, uh, research associates, uh, project, you know, uh, uh, 
corporate strategy and planning analysts and those are the kind of roles that we are doing and in a variety of different companies um, coca cola deloitte facebook heineken kpmg etc uh, as well so um, uh, i think uh, so essentially different roles in different uh, types of organizations uh, so i hope that this question uh, answers your uh, you know that answer sort of your question is answered by that answer. Uh, and also with regards to uh, the practical side of the course, yes, there's um, uh, lots of uh, things that you actually do in the course, which help you sort of practice what you learn or, or put theory into practice. Um, there are definitely case studies that you do uh, on the course, uh, which actually help you with sort of putting that theory into practice. So as I mentioned, um, uh, you know, during the CSO module, which is a creating sustainable organizations module, you actually work on a real life industry challenge. And during the um, social uh, enterprise management module, you actually uh, work with a social enterprise. So there's a social enterprise that comes into the classroom, they set a challenge, they talk about their business, they set a challenge, and then the students actually work on that challenge, come up with some solutions in their teams, and then feedback that information um, to the organization which has uh, come into the classroom. So yes, definitely there are practical aspects associated um, with the course. Um, so I think that was one of the questions. And then um, there was a question about from Cynthia again uh, about a very busy uh, schedule. Um, so will she be able to cope with it? So um, uh, it, it is. I wouldn't say this is. Um, you know, it is an intense course. There will be uh, uh, lots of work to do. Um, so maybe Spondan, you might want to. Uh, uh, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I I completely agree. It's a, it's an intense course. You know, you you need to be on your toes to actually uh, get through all the reading and the lectures, and then there are team meetings, and and then you know you do your own networking. So all of that does take time. But having said that, you know, I I I myself have worked on on a bit of uh, other stuff and you know uh, as an international student i was allowed work for uh, 20 hours a week so even though i didn't reach 20 hours so i i definitely used to work around 10 to 15 hours a week but uh, apart from that you know i would say uh, you know if you you really have to strike a balance and I'm, I'm not really sure if, you know, if you're working full time, then, you know, how much, how much it will be feasible for you to actually, you know, balance, balance both worlds. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I manage with part time work, but, you know, if you're working full time, I'm, I'm not really sure because the course is intense. Thank you for that, Spondan. So there's one more question for Spondan specifically um, from Irina again. Would you please share what was the most difficult for you within the course? Okay, so uh, so there are times when you have uh, multiple assignments, you know, and you know every every one week or two weeks you'll you'll have uh, you'll have to submit the final assignment for your course. And, uh, you know, some of them will be reflective reports, some of them will be very technical, some of them will be, you know, exam. So if you want to have a balance in your life, which I generally strive for, so you, you need to be able to plan well. And uh, once, so what happens is when you start getting into the details of one module, you start reading one book, or, you know, you, you start doing some case studies, you tend to get into it, you know, uh, you know, quite deep. And then, but at the end of the day, it's a management course. So, you know, if there is another assignment, you know, you have competing deadlines. So you need to be able to disconnect at a certain point of time and, you know, do something else and kind of balance both things. That takes some, because it's an intense course, that takes some getting used to. But that's part of the education. And, you know, that kind of really helps when you go out into the world and learn to balance all of these things. So that was, that was one of the difficult things for me in the course, yeah. So is it fully online? No, no, it is. It will be face to face. Most of it will be face to face. There will be some sessions which will be uh, online. Uh, definitely, especially some of the speakers might want to, uh, you know, uh, do their sessions online. But uh, mostly, it will be face to face. Um, are there many calculation 
um, related modules uh, on the course. So I'm guessing accountancy and finance will have some cal calculations and numbers in them, but essentially most of the modules uh, will not have a lot of uh, numerical data that you need to analyze, but yeah. definitely the accounting and finance module. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what's the duration of the course? So it's a, a one-year course. Um, so what is it in here? I'm sorry. Uh, it's a one-year course, yes. Um, any other questions? Um, you can also unmute yourselves and just ask the question if you like. Or raise your hand and I could ask you what your question is. No questions? Anyone wants to add anything? You could always come back um, and, um, sorry, this, in the chat. yeah, you can also uh, always come back to us. Um, so you, um, I can send you the, our, our email IDs again on the chat so that you will have access to them. Um, and you can always get back to us with any questions that you might have. Um, okay. So I think that is a question. Yeah. So what what do I need to prepare for the interview? Um, so I think the interview is mainly to assess, um, you know, your understandings about the course, your just to understand your background, your interest uh, in the course, um, what your experience has been like, um, and uh, maybe also what your uh, you know, what you want to do in the future after uh, you've been on the course. So I think that is what we are trying to assess through the, course, uh, through the interview. Um, just to see if there's an alignment between the course and what you want to do in the future or, you know, uh, so we do not want to have, um, uh, you know, uh, you coming onto a course which you have some different expectations about. So that is what we actually try to uh, make sure during the interview process and also kind of make sure that, um, you know, you will be able to cope with the um, course and um, uh, be sort of a, a good part of the team that we actually develop through the cohort. Um, any more questions? Is It is a full-time course, yes. Um, start and end time, so it, it depends. Um, so the classes can be any time between 8.30 um, a.m. until 6 p.m. Uh, so on, on some days you might have classes in the morning, some, in, on some days you might have classes in the afternoon, sometimes you might have classes um, during the entire duration of the day as well. So it depends, but it is 8.30 to 6 normally. So there are about uh, 15 to 20 students. So this time we have about 16 students uh, in the class. Um, so it's, I think the maximum that uh, we are looking at for next year is 10. Uh, as I said, it's a small cohort. Um, so what is the success rate for applicant admission? So I think um, this is something that um, it kind of changes every year as well, um, but um, Essentially, this is a kind of course which, uh, so sustainability is an upcoming topic. Uh, so most of the applicants that we get, or many of the applicants that we get are really interested um, in sustainability uh, and are passionate about it. Um, so we tend to um, sort of uh, have, uh, uh, you know, specific applications which, um, you know, with specific, you know, students or pros prospective students having specific interest in sustainability. Um, so I think, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question, but you know, it differs. So uh, you know, it can be uh, some years. It can be a good uh, uh, you know ratio of actual applications and people who are actually interested in the course. Sometimes we have to reject a few, um, unfortunately. So what is the usual student mix in terms of gender? So I think the gender ratio is about uh, forty nine percent female and fifty one percent male. Uh, and we have a good mix of um, students coming from different parts of the world, from different professional, personal backgrounds, uh, cultural backgrounds. So it's really nice, actually. We are probably one of the most uh, diverse courses um, within the university. 
uh, in terms of uh, you know people coming from different places from different backgrounds and also with regards to age range so we might have students who are 21 years old who've just graduated but we might also have somebody who is you know 45 and you know they want to change uh, a change of career so you know we have all sorts of uh, uh, sort of professions or age groups also represented uh, in the course Paul, do you have a question yes yes uh, is the course structure like all the classes defined from from the start uh, first semester onwards or do do students have an elective based course where they can choose from a group of courses as well like an, it still has to add into their credit hours but they they can choose an elective course from another stream so um, we do not really have electives as such. Um, so you will be doing all of the courses that are defined. Um, so and you will have all of that information on the web page. So oh. if you can go to the web page and look at look, look up all the modules that we have. Uh, no, we do not have any electives as such. Uh, everything oh. is great. Okay. Anything else? Hi, Namita. Yeah. Hi, Ryan. Yeah, hello from the Philippines. <laughs> yeah, Anamita, I know we're already done with our interview. So when can we expect the, the copy of the conditional or unconditional offer from, from, from Cranfield? So I think it will take a couple of weeks' time. Um, it should be with you uh, in a few days, definitely. I think it's it's slightly uh, a busy period at this moment, so it, it might take a little bit of time. But it should be with you um, in a few days. Uh, in a few weeks time maximum. So a couple of weeks time. I, I, All right, I sounds great. Thank you, thank you. Okay, any more questions, comments about Cranfield, about Cranfield University? If you're an international student, uh, maybe about living in the UK, it could be anything. Uh, no more questions? Yeah, sorry, uh, go on. Hello. Uh, how about the living costs at Cranfield? So usually the student living uh, nearby the campus or they also uh, stay away from the campus? I mean, not living inside the campus hostel or they may rent outside a private house, room and so on? I think you can live on campus or you can live off campus. I think that will be a personal choice. Um, so I think there are some students who live on ca uh, on campus, but there are some others who um, may be living off campus as well. Um, so I think that will be a personal choice. So I spawned in, did you live on the uh, university campus when you were studying? Yes, I live on uh, university uh, accommodation. So that's why I'm asking about the, mm -hmm. how about the country, uh, maybe it's quite tough or compete, compete with other students uh, due to limited uh, or vacancy of the accommodation? I think uh, you might need to get in touch with the, um, the accommodation uh, team uh, at the university. Um, maybe, um, so I, I will maybe follow up on this um, and send you a link to the accommodation people at the university who will be better placed to answer some of your questions relating to accommodation, if it's okay. Um, okay, I think there's a couple of more questions in the chat. When is the application's close date? Um, I think the applications go on until um, June or July. Uh, I think June end next year. So there is still time. Um, so I think if you're interested in ap applying, you can do so uh, within the next um, couple of uh, months or a few months. Because there is still time. Uh, with regards to my field of interest is, uh, sorry, my field of interest is on sustainability in the creative industries. Will I be able to explore this one? Um, uh, I mean, you know, we have people from uh, different uh, industries um, uh, coming from different backgrounds. Um, you may be trained as an engineer um, or, uh, you know, a PR consultant or, you know, maybe you worked in marketing before or, but, you know, you can actually be on the course. Um, so this is, we do not have specific um, information on specific topics. So if you are from the creative industry, we might not have information that we will be talking about specifically about the creative industry, but we'll be talking about a sustainability um, as a larger concept. 
um, and looking at managing corporate sustainability within different organizations uh, and sectors. So um, it's going to be like a more overarching sort of discussion that we're going to have uh, during the course. Um, so if you have an agriculture background, are you still liable to be accepted? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yes, definitely. That's, that's exactly what I mentioned. Um, sorry, my screen is... Um, okay, so... Right. Uh, any more questions at this point? Um, I think I've covered most of the questions on the chat. Anyone wants to um, just unmute themselves and ask a question? Hi, hello. Uh, this is Junaid, I'm from Pakistan. Uh, you just talk about uh, having an airport at the Stanfield University. What sort of an airport it is and what sort of services does it offer? I mean, is it, it does it cover the local flights or I mean, it's, it's, it's something new for me. Today. So I think it caters to, I think, domestic uh, or, you know, small flights. I think there's a lot of research that happens because within the university, there's also a school which uh, is into, you know, they look at aeroplanes and actually do a lot of research relating to that. It used to be a RAF base uh, in the past, which is now converted into um, a sort of an, a small airport where, uh, so I think it's mainly an internal sort of, uh, airport where you know it's just the yeah. local sort of <laughs> flight <Right>. landing. <laughs> okay. I, think yes, uh, <laughs> I got amazed that uh, perhaps if I am having an airport within the university, so we can just spot the flight direct from our no, place I don't to think the... if, if anybody else has any idea about this here, uh, maybe Graham or Caroline or <laughs> Tom, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so. So far, what is the maximum number of students in one class per year? So I think it's been about from 16 to 20. So uh, I have been with, on this course since last year. Um, as, uh, so I joined as a director this year. This year we have 16 students, but I think this course has been running for a few years now. Um, and um, I think I'm not too sure if, what the maximum was, but it we actually look at having a maximum of 20 students. Um, we have 16 this year. Uh, how about the passing rate for the recent graduates? I think this year everybody has passed, um, so which is really commendable. So normally our students do quite well on the course. Uh, that is uh, that is a general fact like that. Um, any other questions that I might have missed um, that you want to talk about at this point? Otherwise. We could, you could always come back uh, to us and uh, you know with any of your questions uh, via email and we can see if we can answer some of those questions for you. Okay then, so if you do not have any questions at this point, maybe um, we could close uh, this session for today. Um, it was great to meet and talk to all of you today. Um, so thank you for attending this event. Um, and as I mentioned, please get back to us um, in case you have any, uh, any more questions. So uh, let me put my um, email on this chat. So in case. In case you wish to. Sorry, I think I just put it. Send it to only spawn then for some reason. There you go. So if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me and um, we can address some of those challenges. So thank you so much, everyone, and see you, see you soon. Hopefully see you on the cohort next year. Bye.